Hi everyone! This is the second part of the video about Moldova. In the first video I have told you about the train bucharest Chisinau. In this video I will tell you more about Moldova itself, about the current situation in this country and about Transnistria, an unrecognized country that doesn't exist on the world maps. Moldova is in a difficult situation. This is a post-Soviet country with a razor-depressed economy. Chisinau, the capital city, is actively developing. This is a video from 2010. You may see old trolley buses, probably still from Soviet times. Same situation was with buses, they all were old. Today the public transport is renovated, the streets are clean, the parks are nice, so you see positive changes on your own eyes. However, there are still a lot of problems, especially outside of Chisinau, where you feel like time has stopped. Rest of Moldova looks very different from its capital city. Because of economical problems, a significant percentage of the country's residents are nostalgic for Soviet times and sympathize with Russia. Even in Chisinau, a monument to Lenin still stands there from Soviet times. The country's culture is very deeply integrated with the Russian information space. Even after the ban of Russian TV and some Russian news websites, Moldova TV channels still show Russian movies and TV shows most of the time. And of course, they are shown in Russian without any translation to Moldovan. If you turn on the radio, you will hear Russian music and sometimes even completely Russian radio stations that are broadcasting weather forecasts for Russian cities. More than one-third of the movies in cinema theaters are shown in Russian. Many of them are actually Russian movies filmed in Russia with Russian actors. This is actually unbelievable from many points of view. The Russian military de facto occupied a part of Moldova, but Moldovans still enjoy Russian movies and contribute financially to Russia in this way. Besides that, I want to remind you that Moldova has a language very similar to Romanian, almost equal to it. So there is no problem to show movies, TV shows and other media products from neighboring Romania if there is a lack of local media products. But for some reason media corporations are choosing Russian products. Even though Moldova supported Ukraine and enjoyed European sanctions against Russia, you may easily find Russian products in the supermarket of Chisinau. Besides Russian products, there are also a lot of products from Belarus but also from Ukraine as well. You may also find bath salt from a Russian company in Crimea, which is labeled as Made in Ukraine. Moldova is probably the only country where you may buy a Christmas candy box and find inside candies from Russia and Ukraine together in one package. From two countries that are at war with each other. Like Ukraine now, Moldova was at a similar war in the 90s. Back then, a part of Moldova proclaimed to be an independent country called Transnistrian Moldovan Republic. The proclaimed republic announced all the area of the left bank of Dniester River as its territory. Of course, as usually in such cases, there was also a historical background as to why this land was not willing to be a part of Moldova. Moldovans are not the majority in this area. But this is not something new in this world. There are so many disputed territories even in Europe. I already have a video about South Tyrol, which can be also named as a disputable territory between Italy and Austria. But none of them have an idea to bring back this dispute. And this is smart, because everybody understands that it's a bad idea to start reviewing borders in the modern world. Nobody needs a new war. In the case of Transnistria, that happened right at the moment when the USSR was collapsing, when new countries were appearing and separatist movements were in trend. When Moldova decided to return the land, 
and get rid of separatists that proclaim their own republic, Russia sent additional military groups and started the proxy war where Moldova had no chance to win. This is my old video from Transnistria, from 2011. That's why the quality is so low, sorry for that. You see the Russian Officers Club, part of the structure of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation. They have everything here. Concerts, disco club, dance aerobics, yoga, even DVD rental, PlayStation and Xbox games, audiobooks. If we talk about Moldovans, I have a feeling that even though most of the locals understand that Russia invaded Ukraine and captured its territory the same way as it happened to Transnistria, for some reasons there is also a mindset of friendship with both Russia and Ukraine. That's why we have this weird combination of Russian and Ukrainian sweets in one candy box. They don't understand the essence of what is happening. During the Transnistria war, a few Moldovan villages fighted against the Russian military to stand for their right to remain a part of Moldova. There were even partisan movements against Russians. At the moment when the war conflict was frozen, a few villages on the left bank of Moldova remained under control of Moldova. That's a small piece of Benderi city that is now a Varnitsa village, a group of villages located between Grigoriopol and Dubasari, and a few more villages on the north of Dubasari, Molovata Nova, Kocieri, Rogi. I think it's good that former enemies were able to sit and get to some agreement without weapons, and that these agreements allow them to coexist peacefully together until now. The only problem is that it's temporary, because the main actor in this conflict is Russia. And Russia already tries to bring this conflict back, for now only by political means. According to the mutual agreement between Moldova and Transnistria, there are checkpoints on the left bank of the river, and even if you enter the area that is controlled by Moldova, there is still a checkpoint with the joint peacekeeping forces. Right there you may see Russian soldiers with weapons and military vehicles. Once again, they are not alone, there are also soldiers from other sides and they are serving there together. If you enter the area controlled by Moldova, there is no passport control. But if you go further, to the area controlled by Transnistria, the passport control will be presented at the borderline. According to the internet, the most bloody fights were happening here, near Dubesari. Thousands of people have died during the war. That's why Transnistrian locals don't support the idea of the new war under any circumstances, even under the strong influence of the very pro-war Russian propaganda broadcasted in Transnistria. Locals don't want to get involved in the war against Moldova or Ukraine. The problem is that nobody will ask for their opinion. Hundreds or maybe thousands of bloggers on YouTube publish videos about Transnistria naming it as a country that doesn't exist, and name it as a last spot of the USSR that is still existing in the world. Unfortunately, this is a hype on the Soviet topic. In fact, Transnistria is very similar to the Ukrainian province, except of two things. First, very strong influence of Russia, which is promoted by local authorities during all the existence of the country. And the second, preserved Soviet traditions that are repeated even more than in Russia. I want to mention that visually you can see many Soviet things in Transnistria, especially if you arrive from Europe or the USA. Yes, many things you see on the streets are very exotic, but this is an imitation of the Soviet Union. Just imitation, not more. They live in the past, but Transnistria is not communist state. It is a militarized state. This is a video from May 9th, 2011. You see a military parade on Victory Day in the center of Tiraspol, capital city of the unrecognized Transnistrian Moldovan Republic.
truth is that Transnistria has a capitalist economy and trades with many countries, including the European Union. Exporting from Transnistria to the European Union is impossible without the cooperation with the official Moldova. So former enemies in the war have a very intense economic cooperation, which somehow helped to freeze the former conflict by now. Transnistria is too small to have an isolated economy. It relies very much on the economic help from Russia, so cooperation with others is a question of the existence of the economy of the unrecognized country. Just look at this Soviet-style poster of the Avatar movie. Even though Transnistria and Moldova have very different political systems, both of them are poor. Transnistria is poor because of limited possibilities to grow, because of the unrecognized status of the country. Besides that, almost all core business in Transnistria is controlled by a very limited group of people. The most famous group is called Sharif. They control all gas stations, supermarkets, have their own football team and stadium, and many many other things in Transnistria are under their control. Of course, almost without competitors. Transnistria is receiving Russian gas for free. And this is an additional guarantee for Russia that everything on this piece of land would be under their control. As for Moldova, it has significant corruption problems and visible political instability due to big influence of the pro-Russian parties supported by many Moldovans. Even though those political parties remain a political minority, they have enough power to bring political instability, especially with the strong financial support from Russia. The Transnistrian Republic is not recognized by anyone, even Russia didn't recognize it. Transnistria held a referendum about joining Russia some years ago, but that didn't change the status of the region. You see the representative office of Abkhazia and South Ossetia, two more unrecognized countries under Russian control located in Georgia. They recognized Transnistria. This is the first president of Transnistria, Igor Smirnov. At the time this photo was taken, he was still president for 20 years. He left his chair the same year this photo was taken, in December 2011. The Transnistrian Moldovan Republic has its own border control, its own currency. By the way, this is Ukrainian poet Shevchenko on their banknote. They have their own military, their own mobile network, their own payment system. Bank cards issued by Transnistrian banks can be used only in Transnistria. And payment terminals in Transnistria cannot accept regular payment cards of such systems as Visa and MasterCard. As I said before, unlike Moldova, Transnistria preserved all Soviet traditions. It still celebrates Soviet holidays, for instance the anniversary of the Great October Socialist Republic on November 7th. Monument of Lenin is still standing in the center of Tiraspol, capital city of the unrecognized region. Because of that all, many bloggers speculate on the topic that Transnistria is like a preserved piece of the USSR. Except Moldovans, a lot of Ukrainians are also living in Transnistria. Some time ago they had their own newspapers in Ukrainian and even local TV shows in Ukrainian. This was 15 years ago. Even though Transnistria declares three languages as official languages of the region, Russian language prevails a lot among other languages. Friendship with Russia is promoted on official level because Russia is a guarantor of the existence of this small unrecognized country. Most of the tourists arriving in Moldova are usually visiting only two cities, Chisinau, capital city of Moldova, and Tiraspol, capital city of unrecognized Transnistria. Of course, both of them are worth visiting, and I recommend you doing so if you are planning to visit Moldova. But in this video, I suggest to you an unusual view on Moldova.
Let's visit Molovata Nova village, a small piece of land on the left bank of the Dniester river, an exclave under the control of Moldova surrounded by Transnistria. There are two ways to get there. Almost all people that travel here go transit over Transnistria. For instance, the direct bus Kishineo Molovata Nova is going this way. This means you need to pass the border control from Transnistria two times. At the border control you don't get any stamps in your passport, but you get a printed piece of paper with all your passport data. You shouldn't lose this piece of paper, as it's the main proof that you passed the border control. When you leave Transnistria and enter Molovata Nova, this paper remains with you, as Transnistria considers this area as Transnistrian but temporarily out of their control. When you enter Transnistria from Molovata Nova, you should have this paper, otherwise you can get into trouble. I have visited Transnistria quite a few times before, but in 2024 I wasn't allowed to enter it due to my citizenship. So I used the second way to get to Molovata Nova. That's a free ferry. This ferry takes you from the right bank of the Dniester river, from the village Molovata, to the left bank of the river, to the village Molovata Nova. The ferry operates approximately every two hours. It takes around 15 minutes to get from one bank to another. And there is a customs control from Moldovan police on the right bank, in Molovata. On the left bank there is an armed checkpoint with soldiers, including Russians. It is forbidden to film them, and there are many signs around that are informing you about it. Usually, you just pass this checkpoint without a stop. Molovata Nova has a very good sanatorium Strugurash, which is very popular among Moldovans. Forget about coming here if you don't speak Moldovan or Russian. There is no chance that anybody here speaks English. That's why I suggest you explore this place by watching my YouTube video. Please leave your like under this video, appreciate my time and efforts when editing this video. Even though the sanatorium is a little bit old-fashioned, it's very nice here. The food is very good and the staff is also nice and caring. Two times per week the sanatorium organized music concerts. This was a nice dive into the local provincial Moldovan culture, something that you cannot usually experience when you stay only in Chisinau.
Molavata Nova is a small village that has a famous museum. This museum appeared in many TV shows and news around the world. The local activist Jon Stefanica bought a house in the village, reconstructed and renovated it, almost completely with his own hands. 2020 Today this house is the Pizan Museum, which offers an authentic look into the rural life of Moldova. This museum is very unusual. There is no entrance fee, but you are welcome to leave the donation. In summertime, you may try fruits from the museum garden that are planted here. You are even allowed to stay for the night for free, but then you have to spend the complete day like a peasant. You should wake up early in the morning and help in the garden or do other activities. At the end of the tour, you are offered to try a sparkling wine, which is also created by the museum owner Ion. As I don't drink alcohol, I was offered to try compote, stewed fruit, which was probably the tastiest one I tried in my life. If you want to take part in the tour, please visit the website of the museum. There you may find all possible contact information that is needed to book the tour. You may call or you may write an email with the desired date. Link to the website will be in the description of the video. Unfortunately, even with all the efforts that are applied to connect Molovata Noa to the rest of Moldova, like for instance a free ferry, the village is quite isolated from the rest of Moldova. The ferry depends on the weather and may stop its operation in extreme winter weather conditions. In this case, the only way to get out of this piece of land would be transit over Transnistria. Even bigger problem appeared during Corona time, when the village was isolated from Transnistria and the only way to get to it was a ferry. I really recommend you visit this village. Here you may discover the rural life in Moldova, have a heartwarming communication with local people, well, if you have someone who speaks their language. Also, you may enjoy amazing natural wonders and have a deep dive into the history of the war in Moldova, as this area was the place of one of the most intense fights and clashes. This is a place of lots of lost lives and tragedies. And let's really hope that nothing like that would happen here again in the future. Discover the world. Don't limit yourself only to comfortable hotels and capital cities. Be a traveler, not just a tourist. When you discover rural areas, you experience the real life of the country and see the reality behind the tourism. And only by knowing this true side of the country, in the world in general, you may see the real picture of the world. Peace.